Telephomoral syndrome is a general term that we throw around when we describe anterior knee pain. So basically just pain in the front of your knee. In simple term, it's when your kneecap and your femur, so your big long bone near the thigh, um, gets a little irritated for some reason and you start experiencing a little pain. So there's a recent clinical practice guideline around patellofemoral pain syndrome. So these are pretty prestigious guidelines used to help clinicians make decisions when you see patients with patellofemoral pain. This came out recently in 2019, and I thought it did a fantastic job looking at what patellofemoral pain is and all of the research surrounding it. So I wanted to share what I learned from reading this paper, and I highly recommend going over this paper yourself. It's open access, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So I always like to look at these decision-making trees to look at what path you should take depending on the patient you get. Step one, a patient comes in, you first have to look at if they are even appropriate for physical therapy. So either they are appropriate for PT or they're appropriate for PT, but also needing a referral to another healthcare professional or not appropriate for PT and refer out. Step two, you have to diagnose the patient. So do they really have patellofemoral pain or is it something else? This clinical practice guideline makes the recommendation of looking at four points to see if a patient has patellofemoral pain. So number one, so it has to be reproducible during a squat, stairs, or functional activity with flexed knee loading and presence of retropatellar or peripatellar pain, basically just pain around the kneecap when you're loading it, and excluding other conditions that may be causing the acute knee pain. So you first have to rule out any other conditions that may be causing this knee pain. And, and lastly, you may experience some hypomobility in the kneecap when you kind of move it around with the patellar tilt test. So this paper actually says that Diagnosis of patellofemoral pain is challenging due to differing reference standards used to determine diagnostic test accuracy. So the best diagnostic tests at this point are those that provoke anterior knee pain during functional activities when the patellofemoral joint is loaded in a flexed knee position. So basically when your knee is bent and you put weight on it or load it, and it and causes pain. And so that's basically the best diagnostic test that we got. Not super scientific. So once you think you have a patient with patellofemoral pain, that's when it gets interesting. We have to look at why did this patient get this? Without going into too much detail, I like how they separated into four categories of potential causes of patellofemoral pain. So the first one is an overloading issue. So maybe you increase your workload so much past the ability of your body to adapt and recover. Or you have a muscle performance issue. So in this case, we would need to strengthen the muscles surrounding the knee and the hip. The third one is a muscle coordination issue. So in this case, maybe the muscles are okay, but maybe the muscles are strong, but it's the motor control or the landing mechanics that's caused this sensitive knee. Fourth, maybe it's a mobility issue. Maybe you don't have enough mobility to get into the position that you're asking your body to get into. So at a first glance, it seems like every case of patellofemoral pain seems like it's neatly categorized into the four categories. Yeah, but like all things in healthcare, nothing is black or white. Like it could be a mobility issue combined with overloading. It could be a coordination issue combined with muscle weakness or a little bit of everything. But I think we just need to use our clinical judgment to look at what are the primary contributing factors that we can target first. Anyways, continue down this chart, they suggest looking at the stage of the acuity. So whether if it's super irritable, you know, more calming down, more subacute or more of a like a later stage. And then we look at some functional outcome measures to measure progress. Here's when things get a little bit more interesting. So what do we actually do about it? What are some interventions we can do to help treat patellofemoral pain? We have a ton of adjuncts treatments or passive treatments to help with symptom reduction in physical therapy. Things like massage, mobilization, taping, uh, ultrasound, e -stem, you know, you name it. This paper actually goes into each treatment and makes a recommendation based on current research, which is super helpful. So with taping, they say only in the short term, up to four weeks in combination with therapeutic exercise. They recommend against using orthoses because of the lack of evidence for it. They recommend foot orthosis only up to six weeks. So in the short term, in combination with exercise, no biofeedback to train the VMO. Oftentimes in physical therapy school, they teach you that VMO is oftentimes blamed because VMO is this muscle in the quad that 
that pulls your kneecap medially and sometimes when your tight structures are on too tight on the lateral side, that's when it pulls over. They recommend against it, so don't worry about it. They say no dry needling. They say maybe use acupuncture, but the evidence surrounding that isn't too great either. Proceed with caution because we're not sure if it's better than placebo. Manotherapy in combination with exercise. And they lumped all the e-stem ultrasound lasers under the biophysical agents, and they don't recommend biophysical agents for the treatment of patellofemoral pain. Looking at all this, you may start to see a theme. Quote, exercise therapy is the critical component and should be the focus in any combined intervention approach. So it's clear that all of these things are more adjunct therapies and should only be used in combination with exercise. So more specifically, they recommend knee and hip strengthening exercises to help treat patellofemoral pain. So if you're a patient with anterior knee pain and going to therapy and you're spending the majority of your time sitting on a hot pack and getting massaged, uh, just show them this paper. But jokes aside, I think this paper did a wonderful job looking at the evidence and making solid recommendations for the treatment of patellofemoral pain. As always, if you found this helpful, like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know. And there's always more to come.